Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to approximate the roots or the solutions or the zeros of a quadratic function. Alright, so our example we're going to look at, it says graph and approximate the zeros of f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 1. So let's go ahead and graph this. So we're going to start off by finding the axis of symmetry. So remember we do that by taking the opposite of b and dividing that by 2a. So we're going to say x equals b is 4, so the opposite of 4 is negative 4, and a is 1. So now we have x equals negative 4 divided by 2, and we have x equals negative 2. So now we can put our axis of symmetry, which is just a vertical line, and actually it's not really even there, right? So we need to, let's put it as a dashed line, okay? So it's our axis of symmetry. Um, it's where we could fold our parabola over. So that's good. Now let's take x equals negative 2 and let's find the y coordinate of our vertex. So we're going to take negative 2 and we're going to plug it in for those two x's there. So we're going to find essentially the f of negative 2. So we're going to take negative 2, we're going to square it, plus 4 times negative 2 plus 1. So this gives us 4 minus 8 plus 1. So 4 minus 8 would be negative 4 and plus one would be negative three. So that means our vertex is located at negative two, negative three. So let's plot that, negative two, negative three would be right here. And now remember when we have a quadratic function in standard form, the c value here is our y-intercept. So we can plot our y-intercept at one, and now we can reflect that point over the axis of symmetry. So it was two units to the right, so two units to the left, and there's our reflected point. So now we can take these three points and we can draw ourselves a parabola through those three points. Let me adjust mine so that it fits my points as well as possible. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now let's take a look, right? We've talked about in a previous video um, how to solve a quadratic by graphing. So I'll link that in the cards right now. But what we notice here is that our solutions do not cross the x-axis at a nice whole number or integer. So here's where the approximation comes in. In this example, we're gonna to approximate to the nearest tenth. So let's look at where our solutions lie. So let's look at this first one here on the left. So this is between negative three and negative four, right? And it looks closer to negative four. So I have a couple of table of values here at the bottom of the screen that we're gonna fill in with some x values. And then we're gonna use our calculator, TI-84 plus CE. You could use whatever calculator you want for this because we're not using the graphing part of our calculator. Um, but we're gonna plug in some x values and just see where our potential zero could be. And we're gonna talk about how to identify that from the table in just a second. So let's fill in some values for this x. Um, for this first table. So I'm going to start off and we're going to do to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to say negative 3.9, negative 3.8, negative 3.7, negative 3.6, and negative 3.5. And you could keep going all the way to negative 3, but if we pinch in, zoom in right here, we can see that our solution is closer to negative 4 than it is negative 3, and it's closer to negative 4 than it is negative 3.5, right? So we know that we can just kind of stop there at negative 3.5. So now if we look at our second zero where it crosses, it's between negative one and zero, right? Right here. And it looks closer to zero, okay? So let's start at negative 0 0.5 and work our way to zero, or it's negative 0 0.1, okay? So now all we're gonna do is take our original equation, which is right up here, and we're gonna take our calculator, because we can do it really quickly, and we're just gonna plug in those x values. So I'm gonna say, in parentheses, negative 3.9, close parentheses, square it, plus four times negative 3.9, and plus one. So my first y value here, I get 0 0.61. Okay, so now what are we doing? Well, let's do the next one and see kind of what's taking place. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do negative 3.8, squared plus four times negative 3.8 plus one. And now here we get 0 0.24. So now I want us to notice what those two y values look like. They're both positive numbers, okay? So what we are looking for here is a change in sign. When are we gonna go from a positive value to a negative value? Because once we do that, we know zero is somewhere in between, and then we can use that to approximate to the closest or to the nearest tenth. So let's keep going. We're gonna do negative 3.7 squared plus four times negative 3.7 plus one. 
and look what happens. We get negative 0.11. So notice right here, we have a sine, it's not how you spell sine, we have a sine change. Okay, so we went from a positive value to a negative value, which means zero must be somewhere in between. And so we can keep going and do negative 3.6. Let's go ahead and do that just to make sure negative 3.6 squared plus four times negative 3.6 plus one, and it's still a negative value, so negative 0.44. And now we know, okay, our answer, our solution, our root, our zero, right? All of those mean the same thing, is somewhere between negative 3.8 and negative 3.7. Well, if we look, negative 3.7 gave us a y value of negative 0.11, and negative 3.8 gave us a y value of 0.24. So which one of those y values is closer to zero? Negative 0.11. So for this one, we're gonna say one of our solutions is x equals negative, I guess instead of saying equal, we could use our squiggly equal sign there, which means approximately, and we're gonna say negative 3.7, because that is where our sign change occurred, and that value, negative 3.7, its corresponding y value was closer to zero than the corresponding y value of negative 3.8. Okay, so now let's find the other one. So now we're gonna plug in negative 0.5 squared plus four times negative 0.5, plus one. And here we get negative 0.75. Now let's remember once again, we're looking for a sign change. So now we're gonna do negative 0.4 plus four times negative 0.4 plus one. And here we get negative 0.44. So still negative, so let's keep going. And uh, now we're gonna do negative 0.3 squared plus four times negative 0.3 plus one and we have negative 0.11, still negative, so let's keep going. And now we're gonna do negative 0.2 squared plus four times negative 0.2 and plus one. And look what we have, 0.24. So now we have our sine change here, right? Sine change, which means our zero is somewhere between there. So now let's look again. Negative 0.3 gave us a y value of negative 0.11 negative 0.2 gave us a y value of 0.24. Which one of those y values is closer to zero? Negative 0.3. So we're gonna say x is approximately negative 0.3. All right, and that is how we can approximate the solutions or the zeros for a quadratic function.